Check this out, check what I'm doing at the same time. I'm rendering a full Blender animation. I'm also rendering a 6K B-Raw timeline. Also doing a Cinebench multi-core score test in the background. And I'm also multitasking, watching multiple 4K videos and doing some online shopping. If you've seen the title of this video and you think that I've taken a hammer to my brand new MacBook, not quite, but I do want to break it on the software level by multitasking and putting as much stress on the RAM, CPU, and GPU as humanly possible. So without wasting any time, let's get straight into the video. As you guys can see here, I have a base model 16 inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro. And let's have a look at what we're gonna be doing in this video, because I can guarantee you, you probably haven't seen anything like it before. So the first stress test we're going to run, and just bear in mind guys, all of these tests are going to be running at the same time. We're going to be doing a multi-core Cinebench benchmark. The next thing we're going to have running is some 6K color graded B-RAW footage. B-RAW is obviously Blackmagic's own codec, and this is straight out of my BMPCC 6K you're watching right now. This is going to be rendering a 10 minute 6K B-Raw clip in the background. And we're not finished yet, guys. We're also going to have a Blender render running in the background just to see if it's going to work at all. And then lastly, we're also going to be doing some multitasking on Safari. We're gonna have multiple 4K videos open and we're gonna be doing some online shopping. And we're gonna see just how the system responds to such a demanding workload and how the CPU and the RAM and the GPU balances everything together. I also have a FLIR thermal camera here, so I'll whip this out in a second, and we'll see just how hot the chassis actually gets. So first things first, let's take a look at the memory pressure and the CPU and the GPU usage just sitting here idle. So if we open up the activity monitor, you can see here that nothing's using up too much at all. You can see we've got 90% of the CPU idle. Uh, the GPU is almost not being used at all. In fact, if I actually bring up the GPU pressure graph and have that there, you can see the pressure is very, very low. And if we come over to look at the memory, now remember guys, this is 16 gigabytes of unified memory. You can see that we're using around 12 to 13 gigabytes and zero swap memory, which is, like I said in my other video, surprising to me because Mac OS does like to swap. Okay, now that we have a baseline, let's get everything started. So here's Cinebench R23. I'm going to start the multi-core. I'm also gonna to come to DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna to come to the render tab, and I'm going to render in H265. I'm also going to render that in 4K. I'm gonna add that to the render queue, and we're going to start rendering that. So now that we're doing the stress test on Cinebench and we're rendering, let's come in and let's play a couple of 4K videos. And I'll make sure these are playing in 4K. So that is now playing in 4K. And this is also playing in 4K. Uh, let's just play a random video in the background. And you can see here, I've got a number of other tabs open as well. So we're doing some just some browsing, some typical videos, uh, some web browsing as well. You can see the pressure here, the GPU pressure is going crazy right now. And if we come over to the activity monitor, you can see again, memory pressure isn't as high as I thought it would be. You can see we are now using two and a half gigabytes of swap memory. Uh, looks like it's staying around the same. So obviously the memory is fully maxed out and Mac OS is now intelligently allocating this to the applications. If we look at the CPU tab, we can see that DaVinci Resolve seems to be, no, actually Cinebench seems to be taking the most, um, but we still have about, okay, 0% idle now. Obviously that is kicking in. Uh, and you can see that DaVinci Resolve is taking up almost all of the GPU, which makes sense uh, because Cinebench should be taking up the CPU. So if we come back to the memory tab, that seems to be staying pretty consistent. We can see DaVinci Resolve is using almost eight gigabytes, followed by Render, followed by Cinebench, and then Safari. You can see all the different tabs here using between 200 to 500 megabytes per tab. Coming back to the CPU, you can see that's really starting to take off Cinebench. So we've only got 1%. So now let's uh, check out the Render. That's 
30% done. Again, that's a 10 minute 6K B raw render. Um, now, let me just actually try to use this thing, guys. So let's say, for example, we're going to google.com. That's loading up perfectly fine. We're gonna go to Razer. We're gonna go check out a Razer laptop. I don't know why you would buy one of these if you have one of these new MacBooks, um, but that's working totally fine. Uh, no kind of lag. If we now come into Blender, you can see we are able to move that around. It's a little bit, we're not getting quite 25 FPS on the counter over there. Let's get a little bit crazy. Let's come in here and let's start rendering the Blender animation as well and see if we can really start to smash this CPU and GPU. So coming back to the memory pressure now, you can see we are really starting to stretch it out. Uh, we're using almost 15 gigs of physical memory and then almost five gigs of swap. You can see again, the GPU pressure is quite consistent. We've got a couple of different drops here and there. Uh, Cinebench still using the majority of the CPU. That is about four minutes done. And DaVinci Resolve definitely seems to be getting impacted by this quite a lot. You might remember a few minutes ago, it was already at about 30%. But again, this is totally working fine. A little bit of slowness in Mac OS now. You can see that those windows, the animation isn't really going as smooth. Let's add a different desktop and swipe between the two. Okay, so we're getting a little bit of lagginess there. Nothing too crazy. Let me get the FLIR camera out and we'll do a quick thermals test. And by the way, the fan is on, but you can barely hear it. I can barely hear it over the ambient noise levels in this room. Okay, so just before we go into the FLIR, we can see here that 0% of the CPU is free. Uh, we have zero gigabytes of memory free. We're almost using eight gigabytes of swap memory. And you can see the GPU pressure there is at 100%. And we have Cinebench still going. We have the DaVinci Resolve render still going. And we also have the Blender render still going. And we also have all of our browsing tabs and our 4K videos still playing in the background. Okay, so let's have a look at the thermals. As you guys can see, it's very obvious where most of the heat is coming from. It's being exhausted out of these back two vents. If you guys have seen the internals on this, you would know that that's where all the heat is being exhausted using the two fans. So that is around 42 degrees Celsius. And if we look at the keyboard, most of the heat is in the middle, but it's at a relatively cool 38 degrees Celsius. And if we come over here to the edge of the keyboard, we're looking at about 35 degrees Celsius. The trackpad itself, nice and cool, 32 degrees, that's barely warm. So that is looking very, very impressive from a thermals point of view. Now you may also be able to hear that the fan noise has kicked up just slightly. I do have some temperature and fan monitoring software here. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell me the CPU temperature of each of the cores. For some reason, I don't think it's available in Monterey yet. Again, Monterey has only been out for about four hours at this point. Coming back to the activity monitor, again, 0% of the CPU is idle. And then the memory, we can see that Blender is now using the majority of the RAM. And you can see the Resolve render is still pattering away in the background, but a lot slower than before, but it's still very, very impressive. And don't forget guys, while this is all happening, I'm watching 4K videos and I'm also doing some browsing on Google. So just to recap guys, check this out. Check what I'm doing at the same time. I'm rendering a full Blender animation. I'm also rendering a 6K B-RAW timeline, 10 minute timeline down into 4K H265. I'm also doing a Cinebench multi-core score test in the background. And I'm also multitasking, watching multiple 4K videos and doing some online shopping. And as you can see there, the experience, although the animations are a little bit choppy, they are quite usable. And I wouldn't have any issues doing some work on Word on the side, for example, while doing all of this. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this little video. I just really wanted to slam this machine and see how far I could push it. Very, very impressive so far. So stay tuned for some additional tests.